Hello, fantasy people. This is Tyler, Demi Demon Ward, and Jason, the Satanic Magnet Youthenbolt. <laughs> I'm a magnet. Did you hear that? <laughs> the nickname, <laughs> Satanic Magnet. Yeah, that's just <laughs> demons are just. This is what it comes to me. I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry, we just I just made this up like ten seconds ago. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> you better dim my gods. I didn't even do my demons. I had no idea he was going to do this, people. I'm just shocked as you are. Demon this magnets. is uh, the fantasy football in show. This is the Halloween episode. This is Pennywise. He's just standing around on my shoulder trying to get a tan. <laughs> Georgie. He's trying to get a tan. <laughs> look how white he is dude i know he's he comes out in october man he's coming out like july or something like that so yeah um this is our weekend wrap-up show we're just kind of going over like four or five games that we kind of watch because we're poor and we can't watch them all so but hey maybe next year when we get laptops and stuff or whatever we're gonna have all the technology we have all the feed we'll share everything it's gonna be overwhelming Uh, Give you I'm all gonna, my passwords. I want to be like that villain and like uh, Green Lantern with Ryan Reynolds. He's his brain. Okay. I was thinking Mega Mind. <laughs> Mega Mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first off, Jason, you want to tell them uh, what they could do to help us out? Yeah, if you want to help us out, if you're enjoying what you see, uh, press that little like button. We like that. We would like for that <laughs> like button to be pushed because if you like it um you can also dislike it i mean that's okay too you know it is what it is and then if you guys have little comments or stuff you want us to go over you could uh leave a comment bam 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 leave it bam 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 and subscribe that'd be great we're working here we're trying this is our second job no but we love this is more of a this is a passion of love jason this is uh i'd rather do this than the job i have yeah you better not because guess how (laughs) this cause this job costs you money I do all this actually. It's got no benefits, like health benefits. I need some health benefits. I need a doctor, doctor to tell me the news. Yeah, your benefits are uh, if you get hurt, I will call 911 for you. Yes. Only problem is I'm very far away, so you should probably get somebody else. Well, uh, I could probably afford that little uh, little get help button. I've fallen and I can't get up. Dude, I used to never see those commercials. I, I used to watch those all the time when I was a kid. And now that I watch, you know, basic cable again to get these free uh, football, they, they target old people so bad on those, man. It's all that alarm stuff again. Mm-hmm. Anyways, let's anyway, get to this, Jason. We got some games to talk about. 49ers, 31, beat up on the Rams, 14. If you watch that game like I did the first quarter, I was like, holy crap, dude. The Rams are actually holding their own against the 49ers. And uh, Matthew Stafford, Matthew Stafford's all slinging it. Woo! sidearm and underneath and i was like, like oh my god was. you know what i felt bad because i was like i felt bad because i was thinking that trevor lawrence wasn't that much better than um you know it was a wash uh relative to um matthew stafford because that's what i was telling uh, matt you know in that trade i was like dude I don't, I don't know which one i'd rather have they both suck you have to start them though um his quarterbacks are just so terrible this year so i was like oh my god dude i was like matt's gonna be, hate us like matt stafford's gonna get 30 points this game and what happened jason well, he didn't get he didn't do that dude it's like <laughs> he definitely what? slowed down and the uh, 49ers took control they had that other quarterback that did even better you know that one that had a perfect passer rating they had that touchdown so going you know when christian mccaffrey got traded our i think both of our thoughts were it was a good thing and mo- mostly just because of touchdown opportunities which is funny because you know Carolina got three touchdowns running back got three touchdowns yesterday, just like Christian McCaffrey. But this is how it's going to be like every week, you know, like it's There's going to be so many touchdown opportunities for him. It's not going to be as, you know, as, you know, three touchdowns because of Debo Samuel. I mean, that's a huge red zone threat right there. So, but what'd you think? Oh, I mean, well, yeah, Christian McCaffrey, what you're saying, more opportunities. Yes. Foreman was somebody who also got three touchdowns. But the system is like they are trying to make McCaffrey uh, LaDamian Thomason because that dude threw a touchdown, ran for a touchdown, and caught a touchdown. What more 
opportunities can you ask for in a court in a running back? So like that's what I was saying. It's it's like um so obviously Shanahan was like they with that one week they game planned all that stuff. And so I was yeah. listening to Chris Long. I was listening to Chris Long and um and he was going he was just talking about how in, how significant just that is. Like putting that on tape with Christian McCaffrey catching a screen and then throwing a touchdown is going to be like people are going to put that on tape and they're going to watch that every single week. So that is just another wrinkle to that offense. And that's a Shannon off. I mean, that's so big for that team, man. Cause when you have Garoppolo as your quarterback, you kind of just have to do this kind of stuff. And it just opens up so many more doors or window windows or whatever you want to say. And plus George Kittle being healthy, you know, just imagine a healthy George Kittle, a healthy CMC and a healthy um, Debo Sam. Debo. You know? So I know yeah. your dad. Your dad's probably so happy right now. Yeah, I mean, I got uh, Debo in my other league, and it's been kind of like a bust. But uh, I also think with um, a kid, Christian McCaffrey playing, like that, I think George Kittle is going to get more opportunities too, even with Debo want, back. Oh no, you're totally right. You're totally right. Um, they're gonna well, they're gonna keep. So, like Chris Long pointed this out. Sorry, I like to listen to NFL players and what they think. He's like everybody's talking about that pass they threw, but the real, I mean, the big deal was. There was a third down um, play on that drive, and Christian McCaffrey. I watched it. Christian McCaffrey had to break two tackles and then get barely get that third down, you know, and that led to them extending that drive and getting that touchdown. So it's like just having Christian McCaffrey is going to lead to so many more opportunities for everybody else. Yeah, because he's so good at third downs. So, and you got the you got the coach to know how to utilize them the yeah. way that fancy players are going to love, and if he keeps this up. This is, one thing, I want to talk, yeah, oh, this is on. one thing I want to talk about. Um, I do want to say that uh, I've heard a lot of stuff about Jeff Wilson Jr. on the trade block. And that makes a lot of sense. You know, they've got Elijah Mitchell coming back. They just traded for CMC. So I was a Jeff Wilson owner and I dropped him. I think he might be available in our league. Uh, but if he gets traded, I mean, the trade deadline's before waivers. So hold him. If you, if you have him, hold him until after the deadline. Yeah, Don't just get go, angry and drop him. Yeah, he could go and play somewhere um, and be like a starting running back there. Dude, the Rams, you know, anything. I don't know. Oh, God. Very similar a similar system and all that. But just think about the Rams, man. Like, they tried to acquire Christian McCaffrey. They've had to face him like two times in the last four weeks. So. <laughs> it's like just our luck. Dude, it's crazy. Um, so as far as the Rams go, this is not their year. Yeah. They need, they need to retool their offensive line and they've got to keep Stafford because Stafford's a great quarterback when he's healthy and has a, and can stay upright. Cause this is exactly what's happening. In, this is what happened in uh, Detroit. So. Yeah. Um, it's definitely not the same team that we saw last year. Uh, Cooper cup is still going to do his thing. You know, the running game. I don't even know where to start. I don't know who to play. Uh, it is kind of ridiculous right now. There, I don't. There's no one to trust. I don't. Well, I can't trust you, anybody. They did you see the hot cars. news? Did you see all the hot news on Sunday morning and Friday night? I don't. You probably didn't see it Friday night because you're not a weirdo like me. Um, oh, what happened? Ronnie Rivers, dude. Like Matthew Barry. Oh, just said yeah, 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 yeah. Ronnie Rivers is starting the game, and I was like, I don't even care, dude. Like. If they're going to do a 50-50 with Daryl Anderson, like, they're, they're terrible. They're going against the 49ers, and yeah. Kyron Williams is coming back. Like, I care about Kyron Williams. I really do. So, like, I will tell people to go pick up Kyron Williams, man. Like, people have been talking about this. It's been on my waiver show for, like, a month and a half. He's on my IR right now, and he's coming back. And all these – watching Ronnie Rivers, I mean, yeah, he's, he's a little quick guy, but none of these guys are good. Yeah, it's it's uh, very unfortunate. You know, I was thinking that like the Rams was going to have, have one of those teams that was just going to be like fantasy players all over the field and stuff like that. And there's no, really only one dude you can count for, and it's Cooper Cup, and he might have just got injured. Well, let me tell you, so McVay says just some uh, tissue swelling with no structural damage for Cup's ankle. Now, tissue swelling could mean a lot, you know, a sprain or whatever. So. Um, I think a high ankle sprain does count as structural damage. So it could be a week or two or nothing, but it's not like it's going to be uh, three weeks or more, I would think. Keep an eye on it. Let me ask you this. Uh, Cooper Cup, out one week. 
two weeks. Are you starting Allen Robinson? Allen Robinson looked good this last game. It's one of his better games. It's but one of his better games. I'm guessing they trade for Brandon Cooks. If um, if they trade for Brandon Cooks, that mean I would expect Cup is probably out for at least two games because they desperately need to win right now. And Cooks was already met with with McVay, I think, when McVay first got there. So I'm sure he knows the offense. Um, mm. And it would I would I would think that you know Cooks would be a wide receiver three for the next couple of weeks until Cooper Cup comes back. So that just sucks all around, man. I mean, for everything, it just sucks all around. I need if you you're, you're wanting Brandon Cooks to go to the Packers, and even then, it's not going to be a turnaround. But at least he's probably going to get hyper targeted. Yeah, which is mm. very important. Yeah, so I thought watching the game, I thought Daryl Henderson looked good, but they obviously hate Daryl Henderson. Um, yeah, he also had a he was he had an illness. He was ill. Oh, there you go. But it just and then I thought Brandon Ayuk looked great, especially without Debo. I like that Debo. I mean, you're almost starting Ayuk. Like you can probably almost start him like in the flex, but if like Debo's not playing, wide receiver too. I am. Put him up there. Put him in. And I was trying Plug to trade him in. Him. Yeah, and I was trying to trade for Ayuk in the beginning of the year when he was in the doghouse or whatever. Uh, this is one of Garoppolo's best game too. 235, two touchdowns and no interceptions. Right. So it's just it's just crazy. So, but anyways, Christian McCaffrey led the team in targets. Yeah. You're and gonna you're gonna see that probably like every other game. That's gonna be a trend. Yeah. George Kittle only got five targets and three receptions. Yeah. Just think about all the – like, I, I do think that Christian McCaffrey and uh, Debo, when they're healthy, is probably not good for his touchdown output. I think he would definitely get, like, more yards. Like, receptions, yards, but uh, I think the touchdowns may be uh, limited now. Yeah, I think McCaffrey is going to be – the number one guy on that team when it comes to getting close to that end zone. Yeah, and and unless Debo's out for a long time, I bet you, like, we drafted Kittle thinking – you draft Kittle for his ceiling, the nuclear 35 points, dude, from a tight end. Yeah. That ain't happening this year. Um, Because especially now that they have Christian McCaffrey and, and, and Debo is going to be just wider – you know, it's just going to be catching passes only. I don't see that really happening. So if you want to try to trade George Kittle for a decent tight end and plus some, I could, I don't, I, don't, I wouldn't be upset about that. Um, and with that game, I wanted to say that like <laughs> Tyler Higby didn't do too well on normal thing. Well, he uh, got hurt right off the bat, dude. Like, oh, he got like, injured. Yeah. Oh, dude. So bad. Like he's, he's like, <laughs> he was like holding the, his, it was a neck injury, but he couldn't move his arm. You know what I'm saying? And he ran off the field, and I was like, "Oh, I thought your dad had Higby." And I was like, "Thank God, bad for Higby." But I was like, "Maybe right. I'll, maybe I'll win this week." And uh, two plays later, that fool came right back on, and he did not look the same. Ugh. So I, I think that they just they were desperate for him, and they just kind of had him in the back pocket, and they just didn't use him. Yeah, so I think with that game, uh, we got to keep an eye on Cooper Cup, see how serious this injury is. And I think Christian McCaffrey is probably back to his old ways, and he's going to be that player that's going to win you championships with a high ass ceiling. Who uh, he's going to do his thing. Are you going to pick up, would you pick up A Rob on uh, waivers if he was there? I've never really believed in Allen Robinson this season. You know, I've, I've always said I feel like he's going to be touchdown dependent. And it seems like that's going to be the thing still. Uh, he did have like a little bit of a better game. He got the seven targets, five receptions. It looked like he averaged at least like 10 yards. But I uh, I mean, keep if if Cup's not playing, they don't get Cooks, he's going to have to throw it to somebody. I would probably pick up Robinson for those games that Cook is out. Well, I will say I was a Robinson believer before the season, and obviously I was wrong. Um, and then uh, Ronnie Rivers. The hot stuff, the waiver hot stuff. Are you picking him up? You got no, I'm not. I'm not picking him up. He basically did the same thing as Darrell Henderson. I got him on my bench. So yeah, I would. I would rather have Kyron Williams. I would rather have Isaiah Pacheco. I'd have to go through my bench because I have everybody. Um, I'd rather have James Cook. There's people Ooh. I'd rather have. Let's go talk about that game. 
You want to talk about that right now? Because I'm good. Yeah, I'm good too. Let's talk about the Bills and Packers. One so, thing that really stands out, Bills are definitely Super Bowl contenders. But they have been letting people back into games as of late. And the Packers offensive line, this is I'm I'm listening to the Chris Long here. No, I guess so. Chris, yeah, I'm good. You're good. It, no, no, and it's like cuz he was he was all like uh the first half was amazing. The second half the terrible offensive Packers line was literally pushing the bills all over the field. And uh, you saw it, Aaron Jones, 150 or 100, 100, pretty much 150 yards. Yeah. So, so that was a, the, that was the biggest thing that Chris Long took out of that game. And he is, you know, NFL defensive lineman. So, right. And I'm glad that you brought that up because like I said, you went against my Faja and fantasy and he told me, because I tried to trade for uh, uh, Foreman before the game started. And he's like, no, I'm actually going to have to play him. I'm taking out Aaron Rod- or uh, Aaron Jones because he's going against the Bills. And the Bills are like like the number one defense, I think, or something like that. And I'm like, well, I, wish you would have played, I wish you would have played Jones. I would have won. <laughs> and, the, and like the thing is, it's like, it's like okay, I can I understand that. I wouldn't want to go into Buffalo and at, – someone from the Packers and, and try to run the ball. And Aaron Jones got over 100, you said 150 yards, something like Dude, that. So he, he averaged seven yards a carry and A.J. Dillon averaged five and a half. So, yeah, this is the Packers that are interesting, Jason. This, this If the Packers just ran the ball and then Aaron Rodgers made timely throws, I mean, he only threw the ball 30 times this, this game yeah. in a losing game. Well, this is what I was talking about earlier. I think it was maybe the second or third week when the Packers played against the Bears and they just ran over, all over the Bears. And past and recent or in past years, the Packers were always uh, throw the ball to set up the run. And now, because Aaron Rodgers hates every wide receiver they throw the ball to, they they need to reverse that, uh, run the ball to set up the pass. And it looked like in the second half, it definitely benefit them, but. It's still, I think Aaron Jones right now is uh, the only person I still want from the Packers. Unfortunately, I have Aaron Rodgers just because I don't know who else to play. Well, hey, man, that guy was asking us about uh, Bateman versus Dobbs, and I was like, Dobbs was was maybe not even playing, and he'd been doing so bad. And then Bateman was coming back, and I I knew that Andrews was coming off an injury, so I was like, Bateman's going to soak up all these targets. And I was like, dude, I would have go Bateman, no problem. And then, and then now we see it, you know, Dobbs, 60 yards and a touchdown. Bateman uh, is going to be out for like three or four weeks. I would drop Bateman, by the way, because that is bogus. Um, yeah, but then you said it too, Tyler. We can't predict injuries. In, I you know, know, I know. Because in that game, dude, Bateman would have had an amazing game that game. Right. But anyways, it it's well, good to see Dobbs got his touchdown, though. To, to continue what you were saying, if we're – Last week, Dobbs didn't even have a catch off of four targets, zero points. And then he's going to play in Buffalo, and you're just like, no. Why would you ever start him? You Why know? would you ever start him? Exactly. And so he, he showed some greatness out there. He looked pretty good, on, on his, especially his touchdown was amazing. But I didn't expect the game to be as close as it was. Um, I'm glad that you what you said, with uh, they are giving up the, the lead a lot. Like they would get this large lead and then maybe the second half to start slowing down because that was just, I thought this game was pretty much over and, going into the yeah. second half. And the thing, and the thing is that Aaron Rodgers' MO over the last, what, like four years is like, if you get up two touchdowns on Aaron Rodgers, like uh, you go up by four touchdowns, you know, like mm-hmm. they don't, they don't fight back. And so I thought it was interesting that, you know, Buffalo, it was, it was what, 24 to 24 to three or 24 to seven in the, first half and then um yeah. buffalo only scored three points in that second half man so and then josh allen's picks were just dumb i was um, i listened to that interview afterwards and one was he said that it was his fault and the second one obviously his fault but he tried to like throw it down on the ground and it came out of his hand weird and it, uh it made All it that, to the guy that was at the goal line yeah yeah so that's what he was saying he said he tried to dirt it and it just came out of his hand weird so yeah, i was like well, yeah that makes sense but Dude, if you're going against Josh mistakes. Allen, yeah, if you're going against Josh Allen, you're probably like, oh my God, this is going to be terrible at yeah. home against the Packers. And um, you probably survived the week. I mean, if you went against Josh Allen, so. 
Yeah. Uh, his favorite target, Stefan Diggs, still doing his thing, too. Stefan Diggs, dude, is uh, – I don't know of another wide receiver I'd rather have. So. Yeah, well, I mean, I know you have Gabe Davis, and you were expecting a big game. It was – I almost flipped this off because I – the first drive of the game, he rolled that bootleg. And he just did this terrible throw. He he had like an 80-yard touchdown on that Zaire Alexander. He underthrew it, and Zaire like hit it out of his hands. I was like, oh, my God, dude. Like, Josh Allen, what are you doing? Over You're underthrowing people? Right. That was like the first play. And then after that, every t- his two targets to Gabriel Davis were the, were the interceptions. So yeah, like, well, dude. he also threw to Gabe Davis in the end zone, and he caught it, but he got pushed out. I was like, oh, 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 oh. No, oh, man, I was, I was like, I needed a huge Gabe Davis game. And like the first, like the third play of the game was like that. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it, Jason. I mean, it sucks. He didn't get those catches. He still had, I think like seven targets. Oh yeah. It's yeah, like, it's, that's targets. the most targets of the, that's the most targets of the year. Even when Josh Allen wasn't thro- only hit through 25 times. So yeah, I mean, he had a great target share, like 30%, 33%. Yeah. Diggs um, only had one more target. But Diggs is getting, but Diggs is getting all the touchdowns, he's getting all the important stuff. Well, Dick, that that route that Diggs ran, it was, it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was a masterpiece, I tell you. It was a masterpiece. So, yeah. So going forward, I love Gabriel Davis. I'm keeping him. I'm starting him every week, um, just because he can get you those thirty point weeks. Um, Stephon Diggs is like the number one wide receiver in fantasy, mm-hmm. um, and then. Uh, Oh, yeah, Dawson Knox. I remember seeing him, but, he, yeah, he, Dawson Knox caught that touchdown, but he got it. he's still he's still a non-factor relative to last year. Back, back, back-to-back back touchdowns after I dropped him. And then the two guys I want to talk about next are Devin Singletary looked great. And uh, if you remember at the end of last year when he went on his run, you know, he was he was killing it. And a game like – games like these makes me think that the Buffalo Bills are just going to start running the hell out of the ball. Um, well, they should when they get the lead. So I wouldn't mind trading for a Singletary. I think that'd be a good trade if you can get him for cheap or whatever. Because I mean, he's really not getting many points, but he looks good and he's enough. And they could start doing this stuff. Um, and then when I saw James Cook, he looked amazing too. Yes, and you know someone, you know what else looked amazing? Mm. Zach Moss didn't play. Oh, so that's two times healthy scratches. So my preseason MVP, or you know. I, my choice that's why i'm guarding the the big turd name um is coming back so at least that mvp is getting some points because the first the first week he had negative two <laughs> <laughs> yeah he had that fumble well he averaged seven yards a carry on five so carries. Gonna, yeah so one I, catch I for I, uh 40 yards 41 yards i'm pretty sure i dropped james cook for oh yeah i dropped him for khalil herbert because I, I just I, I just got oh no i dropped him for josh palmer but um i dropped somebody else I'd rather have Khalil Herbert if he was available than, um, you know, what's his name? James Cook. But if you want somebody on your bench that has potential, one injury away, or maybe they might start including him more. Um, if you're desperate, get James Cook on your on your bench for a lottery ticket. Nobody ever talks about him. You know what team leads the league in rushing? Is it the Packers? It's the Bears. Oh, okay. You want to talk about that? No, I mean, like, you just uh, – you mentioned oh, how you, dropped, Herbert. you picked him up, and I was like, that's not a bad decision. You're, you picked up a running back that's on the team with the uh, – who leads the league in rushing. Well, he's – and he's uh, – dude, it's like – he's averaging more yards after contact than um, David Montgomery's yards per carry. Like, Khalil Herbert is actually having an amazing year, but he just can't – if he's on that offense and can't get on the mm-hmm. field enough. He was top 20 running back before this week, so it's crazy. Uh, yeah, well, so I'm I, saying I that doubt was, that he's available. <laughs> that, was, that was a good pick. That was a good yeah, pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, I could have start. I should have started him over Gus Bus, but hey, we can't predict injuries. Yeah. Get that through your head. I don't even remember what I was saying to the camera when I was all drunk, and I was like, Ugh. Uh, I don't remember either. I don't remember a lot of that show. I don't remember the last uh, 26 minutes of that episode. <laughs> Go back, watch our uh, beer time breakdown. Have a good time. Remember, I, I just remember like, if you like this, like it. <laughs> it's like Will Ferrell in uh, old school. 
crazy, man. Dude, you, you got a that dart in your neck. You got a dart in your neck, man. <laughs> you just took it to the jugular. You're crazy. You drank, you drank six beers. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Oh, dude, Christian Watson. I was like, watch, dude. Uh, Christian Watson's going to get involved. I saw this guy rocket ship out of the backfield and just run into somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who is this? I was like, people can't do that. And then of course he he, he just ended up laying there. Yeah. Just laying there. I feel bad for Christian Watson, dude, but you gotta like rethink your decision. Go one direction. <laughs> Try to yeah. shift. It was uh Halloween, man. He was mummified. That was insane. But <laughs> I've never seen anybody run so fast like with their head down at somebody. <laughs> And he didn't do it. He didn't push the pile. He just, just hit the dirt. Like Adrian Peterson used to do that, but he's big enough. He was just wow. He runs over. over people. This guy yeah. just, it makes he, me think I, I need to watch myself. Sometimes I think if I ran fast enough, I could probably hit, hurt somebody like a brick wall or something. Yeah. I'll just, I'll, I'll just do exactly what Christian was. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Jason, I mean, going forward, I think we talked about it. Oh, as an AJ Dillon owner, I actually that's who I dropped AJ Dillon for Khalil Herbert. So I was like, I'm already getting some the same division backup running backs. What the heck's the difference, dude? Yeah. So if you want to trade um Dillon for Herbert, try to do that. Because people I'm sure people still have a lot of Dillon. And um, at least he got some points this last week. Yeah, he actually got 10 rushes. And you can play the narrative that they're gonna start running the ball more. Look what happened against the Bills, man. Uh, he did hurt his knee for a minute. I thought he like broke and he it. Came right, like, he came yeah, right back. Yeah, so. yeah, he came right back. Continue on playing. Romeo Dobbs. Uh, I I really like this guy. Just the problem is Aaron Rodgers when. doesn't. Yeah. So it's like when he when are you gonna play this guy? Who knows? I who knows? I mean, I I, I would love to. Tr- Josh Palmer all day with Romeo Dobbs. I'm like it, talking. I'm talking about Josh Palmer so much, man. This is this is it's crazy though because you know Romeo Dobbs you know he's a rookie and everything and like uh, he's having his high and he's having his lows. Uh, do you know who led the league in drops their rookie season? Who played for the Packers? Probably Jennings, Devonte Adams. Dang it! I should have known that. I was thinking, who's like the number one? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And then the only reason why he didn't get so much flack for it is because he had Jordy Nelson on his team. There's no one else on the team. They got Romeo Dobbs. If he's not performing in first round pick, he's getting the slack or he's getting hated on for it. I was like, Devontae Adams went through the same crap his his uh his first year and look at him now. But they also have someone else to lean on and be like, oh, you know, Devontae Adams dropped the ball. I'm gonna go to Jordy Nelson, which isn't well, a bad pick too, you know. Well, they got they got Sammy Watkins back and let's look. Sammy Watkins, one catch, one target. I also think he got hurt. He got hurt I think too. he did. I, I was yeah. I was gonna say I'm pretty sure when I was listening to because I remember listening and they're like, "Oh, this is oh newsflash, Sammy Watkins got hurt. You haven't seen that before." And I was like, "Whoa." Um, so yeah, uh, Sammy Watkins. Don't worry about that. It's just crazy, dude. There's nobody to throw to here, and even Robert Tunyon didn't get anything. So yeah, you know what? Five receptions, 35 yards. He actually had a uh, another reception with the sun yardage on it but it was called back and it was offensive pass interference he had a touchdown yeah and, and i do want oh yeah i was just saying i think it was a bad call but it is what it is i'd be frustrated if i was a and an I owner do, and i do want to say i used to love isaiah mckenzie but there might be some better options now i don't know what happened to the slot receiver for josh allen this year he barely threw it so that's but probably you know, it he was all about the slot receiver last year, even when he was bombing them. So, mm-hmm. but Isaiah McKenzie, it's like two weeks in a row, maybe. Um, and it's just, I don't know. There's other people out there right now. At least they're still trying to use, I mean, you got a rushing touchdown. Oh, well, I, you know what, Jason? I am so bad at this whole fantasy football thing. <laughs> uh, he did get a touchdown. So if you want to hold on to him and see what he's doing next week, because I really do like Isaiah McKenzie. I just I was listening to Jim Rome and he had a really good interview with Isaiah McKenzie. He invites 157 people every year when they play the uh, the Dolphins because that's where he's from. He's from Miami. He buys 157 tickets for his friends and family. It's insane. I don't even know that many people. 
dude, it's like, like, like they said, he's playing for free that day because that's his whole game check. Oh um, gosh, that's you know crazy! Isn't that crazy? So yeah. I, I, I just, I really like Isaiah McKenzie. Um. So, anyways, Jason, is there a game? Do you want to talk about the uh, Cowboys game or no? Uh, I don't think we have enough time for it. I just got the. I want to just go to the Vikings. Oh, I don't think we have time for anything. Okay. Well, anyways, we do want to say about the Vikings. Kirk Cousins ended up getting that two touchdowns. He ended up having that low ceiling game. Uh, we, you and I both gave advice to start Lamar and he delivered. So that was good for us. Remember that. We remember dude, us. Remember. remember. I was remember like, us. But you know what, you know what I do want to do on this channel is I want to go over all our bad calls too, because I hate all this Matthew Barry and all this other crap that just like, Oh, you remember when I told you this? It's like, yeah, dude, but you told us 99 other things that were wrong. So it's like, mm -hmm. let's talk about those other 99 things. Accountability. I put my I changed my middle name for God's sakes. Legally. Over over this James Cook call. And then look at me with Cortland Sutton and well Michael Pittman Jr. But dude, there are some things in this league um that have been flipped upside down. Well, I think also something we're gonna we're gonna need to do. I think at the end of the year, I think probably the week after the Super Bowl, let's just go down and be like, this is what we said, this is what we got right, this is what we got wrong. And I think we got our three players. Remember, we, we picked three players. Uh, our fantasy, I forget what they, we called them. Uh, but I want to go over those too. So, yeah, I think I uh, can't remember who I picked. I just know one of them was Damian Pierce. I think I'll, maybe George Pickens is one of them. I can't, I yeah. can't really remember. I think it was. George Pickens finally had a bad game. May I know, and I started him. Don't, the only thing I could think of is that they had Darius Slay on him and basically shut him down. But I could be wrong. I, I didn't really, I didn't see that game. Well, he's still a rookie, and um, he got some targets though. He, they just, they just couldn't connect. I think he was going against the Patriots, right? No, the Eagles. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I figured that was like, see, or the Steelers are going to have to play from behind to do some catch up. They're going to throw the ball a lot, but I don't know. Like I said. I get. I don't know who was covering him. If it was Slay, I completely understand why he got shut down. I just figured uh, Darius Slay might be on uh, Johnson, but I don't yeah. know. We'll see. And, I, and I do want to say, um, Roquan Smith just got traded to the Ravens, and he's an amazing linebacker. So that's two of their Robert Quinn and Roquan Smith. So the the dude, I don't. I almost wonder if they're going to try to trade David Montgomery or something like that too. Are they going completely rebuilding? I'm be, I'm being serious too. Um, so. Yeah, I mean you never you never know. Like you could tell they can't really they're not really doing well throwing the ball. They're doing great running the ball. Um, and then also Jason, next year, 365 days from now, I'm going to be Ace Ventura or something similar. Ah, now I've got a beard. I used to look so much like Ace Ventura. I'll figure something out. I'll probably be like Gladiator. Are you not today? Yeah. What's his name? I'm, Glute I'm Gluteus Maximus the Third or something like that. He was he was dap decap decapitated. What do you know about decapitate? His his dap was his dap was decapitated. <laughs> you remember what I'm talking about? Nope, but it sounded That's funny. That's the office, man, when his old boss oh, got Oh, yeah, his head yeah, got yeah. And he started, like, getting the paper and putting it over his head. <laughs> He's like, you can... I forgot about that, boy. Like, There's like die. a <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thank you so much. I doubt anybody waited till the end of this video. I but hope if so. you did, thank you so much. Hey, man, like, uh, when Matt was like, oh, we're building a community, I was like, oh, my God. I never thought I'd hear anybody say that about I know. we ever do. I know. And I, know, I know there's real, he's pretty much the community. But at the same time, if we ever did build a community, that sounds like an amazing thing. I know. Uh, I was Slowly like, but surely, we're getting there. I think people enjoy the entertainment. You know, we're bringing the humor in. Now all we need is the graphics, Jason. <laughs> I don't know. I think all we need is Pennywise in the background and everyone – thinks our cgi is amazing yeah well how do you gonna... differentiate, how do you differentiate yourself from other fantasy shows uh we just do everything in pencil <laughs> <laughs> we uh we do this like it's like 1989 
pretty 1999 more like it 1999 we're uh we're on that dial up 1999 the dsl hope everybody has fun tonight i had to go and buy candy on my way home because i like i said i remembered today that it was Halloween. yeah <laughs> so be safe out there look both ways when you're crossing the road have your parents check your candy, even though I don't think any kids probably watch the show because they don't know what fantasy football is. Probably think it's a Disney show. Um, yeah, get your fantasy. No? What'd you say? Fantasy? I would be like, if I was a kid and I heard, oh, fantasy football. Bro, Disney is actually coming out with a fantasy football movie. <laughs> so you can't give me crap. I, I'm right, man. I'm right. They are coming out with a movie. Yeah, it's like the 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 dad is playing for the Atlanta Falcons, and for some reason, his daughter plays Madden and is able to connect. So when she's playing Madden and killing it with her dad, her dad's doing it on the field. So he's like doing front flips and triple axles and all oh that stuff. Oh my god! And everyone's like, "Oh my god, he's amazing! How's he I've doing already, this?" I, I've already watched Game Plan with The Rock, so I'm good. <laughs> That was Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. Um, anyways, please like and subscribe. And if you don't like us, uh, you can tell us why. Leave a hurtful comment or a thumbs down. Uh, so anyways, this was Jason and Tyler. Halloween episode with Pennywise. And we will see you. I'll, I'll probably see you tomorrow on my waiver show. So this is Fantasy Football and Show. See ya. Later. Have a good one. <laughs>